The name of this doll is Honeymoon. Honeymoon is the newest character in one of the world's most famous comic strips, Dick Tracy. The creator of Dick Tracy is one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Chester Gould. My name is Chester Gould. My name is Chester Gould. Only one of these gentlemen is the real Chester Gould. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by a new denture cream. The special denture toothpaste made with the cleaning power denture wears need. Denture cream. And now, here's your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, evening, Bud. That's what I like. Spirit, spirit all the way. <laughs> Open up that first envelope, if you will, please, and follow along in this first story. I, Chester Gould, am the creator of the comic strip Dick Tracy. I brought Tracy into the world during the height of the American gangster era of the early 30s. He has become the most famous comic strip detective of all time. I modeled Tracy after my conception of the ideal American Sherlock Holmes. In his 34 years of fighting crime, Tracy has tangled with such unforgettable characters as Flat Top, The Mole, Shaky, Prune Face, <laughs> BB Eyes, Shoulders, and of course, B.O. Plenty and Gravel Gertie. In 1947, Tracy married his long-suffering girlfriend, Tess Trueheart. Their adopted son, Junior, went out of this world to marry Moon Maid, and their daughter, Honeymoon, was born on September 12, 1965. On that date, Tracy enjoyed his proudest moment. He became a grandfather. Signed, Chester Gould. <laughs> Well, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Chester Gould. Let's start the questioning with Orson Bean. Orson? Y yes, I wonder how it feels to have a granddaughter with horns. Number three, <laughs> uh, when the little girl was born, we had a newspaper strike here in New York, and this is the first picture I've seen of her, and she looks beautiful. Let me ask you, number three, whatever happened to Pat Patton? Uh, he's now chief of police. Oh, all right. Number one, uh, the mole lived, as I recall, under the ground beneath a junkyard. Through what? Did he enter to get into the hole that took him down to his abode? Well, it was a sort of a cabin or a, uh, a squatter's hut, let's call it that. All right. Num that that number two, uh, uh, Sparkle Plenty is the daughter of whom? Yes, of uh, Sparkle Plenty? Yes. It's who? the daughter of... Uh, All right, I know Gravel Gertie. Uh, of whom? Gravel Gertie. And, and now, originally, was B.O. Plenty a likable character when you first started drawing? No, he was, uh, he was a little on the rough side. All right. Sort of a... uh, n number three... Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, uh, Dick Tracy is so handsome. Uh, I wonder if he was drawn from someone you really knew. No, it was, well, I think as the uh, announcer said, he was a reasonable facsimile of what we consider as an American type of Sherlock Holmes, but no one in, in particular. I Not with that nose, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two, what, did, uh, what kind of a character has uh, B.O. Plenty become? B.O. Uh, Plenty is... Uh, He's a home man now. He's a home man, oh, in yes. spite of his whiskers. He... <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, do you draw this uh, as well as do the story? That is correct. How do you do it? Do you do the story first and then draw the, the cartoon? That's right. Number one, why have you gone into space? Well, it seems to be a new concept. Uh, we've been on Earth with all these different conflicts of uh, uh, criminals and whatnot. We thought it might be a change of pace in keeping with the going of it. Thank you. you. John Post. Thank you. Number three, who was the first crook, the first big heavy you had for your strip? Uh, a fellow by the name of Big Boy. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, number one, who, who, do you remember the message that was flashed to him in jail by a mirror? No, I don't. 
Uh, number two, uh, I first... Back. <laughs> yeah. I first uh, remember reading about Dick Tracy in a big little book. What's a big little book? Number two. I don't know, sir. Uh, number three, who used to be the chief if Pat Patton is now the chief? A uh, gentleman by the name of Brandon who resigned. Uh, why did he resign, number three? He resigned because he felt he was responsible for the murder of Brilliant, the fellow that invented the two-way wrist radio. <laughs> Number one, uh, there's a comic strip that's actually fashion, a lampoon of Dick Tracy. What's the name of that? I don't recall now. It's also quite, quite a brilliant cartoonist. Peggy Cat. Thank you. Uh, number three, has Dick Tracy ever taken off his hat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I presume when he sleeps, yes. But I mean... <laughs> Junior when he got that fancy watch? Uh, he, I think we paced him at about 14, 15 years old. He was quite young. Thank you. Uh, number two, you haven't mentioned my favorite, Vitamin Flint Heart. Yes. I loved him. What happened to him? Well, he's, uh, he'll be back in the picture very shortly. But what's he doing now? I mean, I'd like to know right this minute what he's doing. <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, um, let me see. Oh, yes. Uh, number three, who was Spark of Plenty's daddy? A bureau plenty. Thank you. Number one, can you account for the remarkable disresemblance she has to her parents? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Grandma Gertie and Bio plenty pew, and she's lovely. Well, if, if you shave Bio's plenty's beard off and fix her, you know, the similarity in hair, though, you want the long golden hair. Yeah, it's a little similarity plenty has there. long, rotten black hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have time for. Vote now, if you will, please, without consultation and without changing. Uh, vote immediately on the information you have. For number one, number two, or number three. Of course, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Are all your ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I thought he just had too much information. I thought uh, that that first crook's name had Mike in it someplace, but I think Big Boy was right. It's a long time ago. Peggy Cat. I almost voted for number one because he looks like Dick Tracy. <laughs> but, but number three spoke so warmly that I know it's his family that we're talking about tonight. Arson. Number one said that the mole went through a shack. I believe it was an old car that he went through. Uh, I, I meant to ask about Red Rum, whose name spelled backwards as murder. I think he was, I think, the first, but I still voted for number three. They were all good. Well, that makes three for three. What about you, Kitty? I voted for number three because Orson is an expert on, to on comic strips, and number one couldn't remember something, and I think you'd remember it even though it was a long time back, although he does like, look like Dick Tracy. So I voted well, that three. makes it unanimous. So the votes all in and the minds made up. We'll find out now which one of these three gentlemen, in truth, is Chester Gould. Will the real Chester Gould please stand up? <laughs> Thank you, Chester, and long may he wave. Thank you. <laughs> it's been Thank a wonderful call. Uh, number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Lewis Smith, and I'm a lighting consultant. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Bob Godfrey, and I'm a songwriter. You might be interested to know that one of the persons who regularly sings Bob Godfrey's songs is his brother, Arthur Godfrey. Ah. <laughs> Checking the score, we find there were no incorrect votes, but in that case, there still is $150 coming your way, and we hope the laughs and the good time you have make up for anything else. We certainly thoroughly enjoyed having you here. Good night, and God bless you.